Welcome to the latest edition of the Teamsters podcast. I'm Kara Dennis of the Teamsters Communications Department. In this episode, we'll take an in-depth look into the nation's efforts to vaccinate Americans with members of the Teamsters Safety and Health Department and why it's a good idea that all Teamsters get vaccinated. In the year since the pandemic took hold, the Safety and Health Department has given extensive guidance to the membership of how to stay safe, whether it be the proper cleaning for their vehicle or work area or the importance of mask wearing. Now it's created a webinar that details the importance of the coronavirus vaccine, which can be viewed at ibt.io slash COVID webinar. For more details on the safety and the benefits of the COVID-19 vaccine, I now turn to Anjali de Grasse, Deputy Director of the Teamster Safety and Health Department. Hello, Teamster Nation. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Anjali DeGrasse, and I am the Deputy Director of Safety and Health at the IBT. The Safety and Health team at the IBT is led by our Department Director, Lamont Bird, and a host of staff members who have been diligently working throughout this pandemic to ensure Teamster members have the best and most reliable, up-to-date health and safety information related to COVID-19. On today's podcast, you will hear from several of our knowledgeable staff members who will be providing valuable information on the COVID-19 vaccination, provide answers to your top frequently asked questions regarding vaccination, and provide you with information on our free virtual COVID-19 awareness training classes. In this first segment, we will be speaking with Chris Lott, an industrial hygienist in the Safety and Health Department, who will provide some general information on the COVID-19 vaccine. Welcome, Chris. Hello, everyone. Glad to be here today and to be able to share with you all some information on the COVID-19 vaccination. Wonderful. So, Chris, in general, can you tell us a little bit about how vaccination works and how vaccines work? Vaccination is a safe and effective way to prevent disease and save lives through the act of introducing a vaccine into the body, which helps your body's natural immune system to produce immunity to a specific disease. A vaccine is a product that stimulates a person's immune system to produce immunity to a specific disease, protecting the person from that disease. Vaccines are typically administered through needle injections like the COVID-19 vaccine, but in some cases, they can also be administered by mouth or sprayed into the nose. The COVID-19 vaccine is only available by needle injection at this time. Vaccines save the lives of up to 3 million people every year. When a person gets vaccinated against a disease, their risk of infection is reduced so they are far less likely to transmit it to others. As more people in the community get vaccinated, fewer people remain vulnerable, and there is a less possibility for passing the virus on from person to person. As I mentioned mentioned previously, a vaccine reduces the risk of getting a disease by working with your body's natural defenses to build protection. Once you get a vaccine, your immune system will respond in three ways by recognizing the invading virus or bacteria or signature protein profile of the germ, produce antibodies, which antibodies are proteins produced naturally by the immune system to fight disease, and lastly, from a memory of the virus markers and how to fight them. This memory produced by your immune system is vital because if you are ever exposed to the virus again, your immune system will quickly recognize and destroy it before you become sick. May I add one last thing? The World Health Organization, or WHO, estimates that vaccines save between two to three million lives every year. Vaccines are proven effective in protection against several pathogens and seasonal viruses such as the flu. Without vaccines, we are indeed at risk of severe illnesses and disabilities from diseases. Okay. Well, speaking of vaccine effectiveness and safety, Chris, is there any government oversight into the vaccine and science behind the vaccine, which ensures that it is safe for human use? 
The U.S. Food and Drug Administration, or the FDA, is responsible for ensuring the safety of each vaccine administered in the United States. In emergency situations, such as during an active pandemic, the FDA can grant an emergency use authorization in advance of an anticipated full FDA authorization, which may take many months to years to gain. Each of the COVID-19 vaccines currently available in the United States has been approved by the FDA for emergency use. And can you talk a little bit about which vaccines have gained FDA emergency use authorization? The vaccines currently available to the U.S. market include vaccines manufactured by Moderna, Pfizer, and Johnson & Johnson. And can you speak on the key ingredients in each of those vaccines that make them effective? Vaccine ingredients play an essential role in ensuring effectiveness. Both the Moderna and Pfizer COVID-19 vaccines contain a genetic instruction manual, which is mRNA, that tells your immune system how to respond if you are exposed to the virus and to make antibodies quickly to fight off the virus that causes COVID-19 disease. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine does not use an mRNA design. Instead, a genetically modified adenovirus coated with SARS-CoV-2 spike protein DNA prompts the body to generate protective antibodies and activate other immune T cells if needed. The adenovirus cannot multiply inside cells or cause illness itself. This vaccine comes out of decades of research on adenovirus-based vaccines and is proven safe to use in this application. Neither the Moderna, Pfizer, or Johnson & Johnson vaccines contain dead or weakened COVID-19 virus material. Okay, that's good to know. Um, I know that that has been a question on whether or not the vaccine does contain the virus, but it's good to know that neither um, of the vaccines available today contain dead or weakened COVID-19 virus material. Um, so where uh, is the COVID-19 vaccine administered into the body? So the vaccine is administered in the upper arms deltoid muscle. The needle size is roughly one to one and a half inches, and the site of injection will be decided for each person based on the size of the muscle and thickness of the individual's arm. And about how many doses of the COVID-19 vaccine will be needed? I've heard some are two doses, some are one. Can you give us some clarity on that? Yes. So both the Pfizer and the Moderna COVID-19 vaccines will require two shots for them to be effective. The first, shot, the, fir the first shot starts building protection. The second shot gives a few, the second shot is given a few weeks later and is considered a booster shot and is needed to boost antibody protection to gain the highest protection level the vaccine has to offer. The same vaccine should be administered for both the first and second doses. COVID-19 vaccine products are not thought to be interchangeable at this time. However, there has been some discussion on this topic. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine requires one shot only. The COVID-19 vaccine may not provide the full protection that a vaccine provides until a week or two after your second shot or dose is given. However, vaccine experts agree that all available vaccines offer very good protection by the most important measures. Okay, so I guess then um, whether you're offered the Pfizer, Moderna, or Johnson & Johnson vaccine, it's a good idea to just take whatever is available. There's no real uh, plus or minus um, as far as the effectiveness of each of those vaccines then. Great. So can you describe some of the side effects patients may experience after receiving either of the COVID-19 vaccines? So side effects are not experienced by everyone. However, some side effects that have been reported include tiredness, headache, muscle pain, chills, joint pain, nausea, feeling unwell, swelling lymph nodes, injection site redness and swelling, shortness of breath, the sensation of numbness and tingling in the upper extremities, chest pain and fever. While being rare, the COVID-19 vaccine could cause a severe allergic reaction that would usually occur within a few minutes to one hour after getting the vaccine. 
The CDC guidelines require that patients be monitored for 15 to 30 minutes for signs of an allergic reaction. Vaccination providers should, be, should have appropriate medications and equipment, such as epinephrine, antihistamines, stethoscopes, blood pressure cuffs, and timing devices to check your pulse at all COVID-19 vaccination sites. Signs of severe allergic reactions may include difficulty breathing, swelling of your face or throat, fast heartbeats, a rash all over your body, dizziness, and weakness. If you experience or think you may be experiencing a severe allergic reaction after you have the immediate vaccination center, proceed immediately to an emergency room or dial 911. And what should you do to protect yourself after you have received the COVID-19 vaccination? So you should continue to wear your face mask or cloth face covering over your nose and mouth in public. You should be practicing physical social distancing. Avoid large crowds. Wash your hands often with soap and water for at least 20 seconds or use a hand sanitizer that at least has 60% or greater of alcohol in the ingredients. Continue to clean and disinfect all frequently touched services daily. Well, that's great information. Thank you, Chris, for providing that information to us. We have learned a lot about the vaccines currently available. We will continue in the next segment with Azita Mashiaki, who will provide answers to a few of your burning, frequently asked questions on the COVID-19 vaccine. Azita Mashiaki is a senior industrial hygienist in the Safety and Health Department and has been with the IBT for over 15 years. In this segment, Ms. Mashiaki will be providing answers to the most pressing, frequently asked questions regarding the COVID-19 vaccine. Welcome, Azita. Thank you, Anjali. I'm happy to be here and to discuss this useful information with Teamster members. COVID-19 vaccines are proven to effectively reduce serious illness, long-term complications from the virus, and the spread of the virus from person to person and within the community. When the virus is allowed to spread and replicate, it mutates. These changes potentially cause the virus to be more resistant to vaccines. By taking the vaccine, you can help prevent this. New variants of a virus are expected to occur over time and multiple variants of the virus that causes COVID-19 have been documented in the United States and globally during this pandemic. Sometimes new variants emerge and disappear. Other times new variants emerge and persist. There are differences between these variants that make them more or less dangerous than others. This is currently being studied and monitored by scientists. Currently available vaccines provide some protection against the variants. Studies suggest that antibodies generated through vaccination with currently authorized vaccines recognize these variants. Because the disease is new, we still have more to learn about how long immunity might last. The protection afforded by the vaccines may decrease over time and you may be susceptible again. So you may need to get a booster shot that will be developed to defend against a specific variant. Public health experts and scientists will continue to study the virus and monitor public immunity and issue guidance accordingly. While the vaccine provides significant protection, it is not 100% effective. It typically takes a few weeks for the body to build immunity after vaccination. That means there is a slight chance it is possible a person could be infected with a virus that causes COVID-19 just before or just after vaccination and get sick. This is because the vaccine has not had enough time to provide protection. But it will most likely be a mild case of the virus instead of a severe case that is possible without the vaccine. Contracting the virus without the protection of a vaccine can have potentially deadly consequences. Vaccinated individuals can still potentially spread the virus to others who may not have received the vaccine. 
The extent to which this happens for each vaccine is under investigation by scientists. That is why even if you have already been vaccinated, it will be critical to protect yourself and others against COVID-19 by wearing a mask, staying at least six feet apart, avoiding crowds, and washing your hands. For folks who've already had COVID-19, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, recommends still that they are vaccinated. The reason is that there is not enough information currently available to say if or for how long after infection someone is protected from getting COVID-19 again. Early evidence suggests that natural immunity from COVID-19 may not last very long, but more studies are needed to understand this better. It would be best to speak with your doctor to find out more about what's best for you. Some people who get a COVID-19 vaccine will experience minor and temporary mild side effects, such as pain at the injection site, fatigue, occasional fever, headache, or aching muscles and joints. These side effects may affect your ability to do some daily activities, but they typically go away within a few hours or days. If someone is going to have a bad reaction to a vaccine, it is likely to occur in the first 30 minutes of administration. COVID-19 vaccines are still being tested for long-term side effects. As more people get vaccinated, more information will be available in the coming weeks and months. At this point, no long-term safety issues have been detected. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, and the Food and Drug Administration, FDA scientists and medical professionals are continuously reviewing vaccine safety and will provide information to the public and act on new safety concerns if needed. Given that COVID-19 infections may result in severe side effects and that long-term side effects from the vaccines are rare, it is clear that getting vaccinated may be the safest choice for the majority of people. We do not yet know for certain individuals with different pre-existing conditions how they will react to the vaccines. However, it is clear that those with other health complications like asthma, COPD, diabetes mellitus, and those with heart conditions, neurological conditions, or who are immunocompromised, to name a few, are at a higher risk for experiencing the most severe cases of COVID-19. If you have a pre-existing condition, you should consult your doctor on what is best for you. Some people may be at risk for an adverse reaction to the vaccine because of an allergy to one of the vaccine components or a medical condition. Per the CDC, if you had a severe allergic reaction, also known as anaphylaxis, after getting the first shot of a COVID-19 vaccine, um, CDC recommends that you not get a second shot of that vaccine. If the reaction was after an mRNA COVID-19 vaccine, either Pfizer or Moderna, you should not get a second shot of either of those vaccines. An allergic reaction is considered severe when a person needs to be treated with epinephrine or EpiPen, or if they must go to the hospital. The CDC provides recommendations for people who have had allergic reactions to other vaccines and for those with different types of allergies to decline the vaccine. With a religious exemption, some people may decline vaccination because of a deeply held religious belief. The CDC has learned of reports that some people have experienced a red, itchy, swollen, or painful rash where they got the shot. These rashes can start a few days to more than a week after the first shot and are sometimes quite large. These rashes are also known as COVID arm. If you experience COVID arm after getting the first shot, you should still get the second shot at the recommended interval if the vaccine you got needs a second shot. Tell your vaccination provider that you experienced a rash or COVID arm after the first shot. Your vaccination provider may recommend that you get the second shot in the opposite arm. 
you will not have to pay for the vaccine. The vaccine itself is free and Medicare, Medicaid and private insurance companies have agreed to offer it for free. Uninsured individuals can also receive the vaccine at no cost. If your employer requires you to show proof that you received the COVID-19 vaccination, you may need to provide a vaccination card. However, you do not need to provide any other personal medical information as part of the proof. All vaccines currently available in the US were approved under an FDA protocol called Emergency Use Authorization, EUA. And as of now, receiving the vaccine under the EUA is voluntary. This, however, does not prevent employers from requiring that employees receive COVID-19 vaccination as a condition of employment. Employees may decide to decline participation in a mandatory vaccination program. However, this decision may preclude continued employment with the organization. Exceptions may be granted to employees with documented allergies, ADA covered disabilities, or deeply held religious beliefs against vaccination. Whether an employer requires or mandates COVID-19 vaccination is a matter of state or other applicable laws and may be subject to collective bargaining. Guidance on this matter should be sought from your local union or legal counsel before action is taken. Thank you, Azita, for speaking with us today. You touched on many important topics in this segment. For our podcast listeners, if you would like to view the vaccine fact sheet or frequently asked questions document, which contains information you heard here today, please visit our website, www.teamster.org or www.teamstersafety.org, where you will find all of our fact sheets related to COVID-19 and other resources like links to CDC's Essential Worker Toolkit that you may find useful. In addition to a number of fact sheets and guidance documents available to Teamster members, the Safety and Health Department has a robust worker training program. I have asked Charles Austin, an industrial hygienist in our department, to provide a brief summary of one of our free COVID-19 awareness training classes that we offer to Teamster members and others as a part of our worker training program. Welcome, Charles. Uh, Good morning, Anjali. Um, Hello, Teamster Nation, Teamster family. Uh, My name is Charles Austin, as Anjali mentioned. I'm industrial hygienist with our safety and health department. Um, One thing we're doing now is providing uh, virtual COVID safety training And we've been doing that since July of 2020. The course is designed to increase workers' knowledge of hazards that may encounter on the job site related to potential occupational exposures to SARS-CoV-2. That's the virus that causes COVID-19. The trainer will explain what is uh, SARS-CoV-2, how is it spread, symptoms, how to protect workers, cleaning and disinfecting and vaccinations. The course incorporates instructors lecture with students, questions and discussions, breakout groups and small group student activities. The topics that's covered in this course are what is COVID, how is COVID spread, what are the symptoms, how to protect workers, cleaning and vaccinations. And that's become important because of what has been happening over the last few months. Um, If you want to take this virtual 90-minute course, visit us at teamsofsafety.org to see our scheduled courses. Thank you so much, um, Charles, for giving us a brief rundown of the availability for the COVID-19 awareness course. I know that um, you guys have put together and developed a really awesome and interactive course, even though it's presented over Zoom, and that's just great. It's a testament to our ability uh, to provide quality training source training uh, resources to our Teamster membership. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. The Teamster Safety and Health Department has created a wealth of coronavirus-related materials that members can access 
running the gamut from vaccine information and policy updates to industry-specific fact sheets. All can be found at www.teamster.org slash COVID-19. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Teamsters podcast. Join us next time for another episode from America's Strongest Union. And be sure to check out www.teamster.org regularly for updates.